everybody. Welcome back to a brand new video. Uh, I appreciate all the support from the last video. I did honestly did not expect that to blow up like at, at all. I, I am terrible at explaining things. But why would you click on it? Anyways, uh, we're going to be going on to the next topic for this little series that I've been doing. And it's going to be on Unity this time. Uh, we're going to go over what it's used for, how to get it, um, but what really is it? Well, unity is, in technicality, the cohesion of your empire, right? How much your people feel connected uh, as one country, all that kind of stuff. But uh, you, I, I know why you're here. How do we abuse it? How do we use it? Because it's a resource, same as any other thing, in Stolaris. So let's get right into the video. All right. So, Unity, what do you use it for? Well, one of the main things is your leaders. Uh, when you hire a leader at the beginning of any given game, you're going to be given uh, three choices, right? And each one has modifiers on what they're good at, right? What they're skilled at. When you hire a leader, it costs a lump sum of unity up front. There's whatever leaders it is. It could be scientists, it could be generals, it could be admirals, it could be governors. They all cost unity to hire. And once you have hired them and have been employing them, they have an upkeep to them. It's usually like two, one unity per month kind of thing. It's nothing too big, but the, the unity early game is a little bit tricky to get, you know? Uh, another thing is obviously your tradition trees the things that make up your empire the things that really flesh out the identity that you want your your empire to go uh, whether it's expanding aggressively uh going really hard after like exploring the unknown uh getting research about it maybe it's harvesting your resources and just trying to get all of the output you can or <clears throat> the better option trade trade protection more merchants money trade money anyways once you get those parts of the empire and you keep producing more unity in order to get more and more traditions it really helps pump up your economy your naval capacity all that kind of stuff uh do note however that in the 3.6.0 update the orion update um, tradition trees are going to get a little bit of a rework, not really a rework into how they work, more so they're adding uh, more fleshed out tradition trees for different paths you're going to take, like synthetic ascension, um, psionics, stuff like that. Uh, I'll be making a video about that because I do very much look forward to it. I haven't really touched any of it because I wanted to wait and see uh, the exact changes before I made the video about it. Maybe, maybe a day or so before that it goes live, I might contemplate making a video, but we'll, we'll see. Um, after you've finished your tradition trees, each time you finish one tree, you get access to an ascension perk. Uh, obviously, it doesn't cost Unity to get these Ascension perks. However, it does tie into the Unity thing because the more Unity you have per month, the faster you get Tradition Trees. The faster you get Tradition Trees completed, the faster you get these Ascension perks. Obviously, there are some Ascension perks that increase Unity output, uh, probably from things like Consecrated Worlds, right? You can Consecrate a World. I believe it costs Unity to Consecrate initially and then it helps boost a uh, with a modifier to your production but another use for unity would be your edicts and your edict capacity now every empire has uh that list there right of edicts that you can use for your empire whether it's uh increasing your alloy production increasing your credit capacity all that kind of stuff you have these edicts for temporary boosts to your empire well i say temporary a lot of the times I just leave them on because why would it you why why would it you well yeah uh edict capacity is something that you can increase a little bit right um but if you spill over from your edict capacity it's going to start taking from your total uh unity per month which is why I'm putting this here because I like to generate a lot of unity early 
in order to use more edicts, even though I don't have a high edict capacity. It's very useful, and it's probably situational as well, but it does tie into it. Last thing that you can use Unity for would be your mega structures. Now, mega structures are the end goal of a lot of things, right? You, you, you get your mega shipyard, you get your matter decompressor, you dice and sphere, ring worlds. The one giant Cheeto that you put in the space time continuum that makes you you i i'm extremely tired today <laughs> when you build a mega structure it's going to cost you about i believe two to three thousand unity just to put the site of it down and then every time you upgrade it i believe it costs a little bit more unity as well i will have to double check if that is not the case i'm going to put a decal right here calling myself stupid um but yeah but we've gone over what it's used for. How do, we, how do you get Unity in the first place, right? Well, Unity, you can get it through jobs, through Ascension perks, through factions, a whole, a whole bunch of things. But let's go over each individual thing, right? All right, so factions. Now, factions are the groups of individuals that live within your empire. It's not necessarily the species, it's more so how, what your citizens believe, right? So your citizens are either the main civics, right? Pacifists, militarists, xenophobes, xenophile, all that kind of stuff. The more factions you have, the more unity you can technically get. And there's obviously the modifiers like we spoke about in the last video that can increase the amount of, uh, the amount of unity that you get from factions. Uh, however, factions are very finicky. And they all have like a list of demands that they want, how they want to be happier because they all have different, obviously, ethics. So let's say spiritualist. If you allow machines in your empire, they're not going to be happy. But if you're a materialist and you don't allow robots, why? Robots, good. Tech, bad, apparently. All of these factions have different uh, happiness ratings. And the way you change your policies is going to affect them. And thus, it affects the amount of, uh, the amount of unity they also produce. I mean, you, you don't have to keep all of the factions happy. Just the main one, the largest one. If you have a larger faction, it's going to, on average, produce more unity. So if you want to be just one faction or multiple factions, that's up to you. You can also get unity from planetary uh, resource deposits. There are some anomalies, I believe, that were added in the, the current patch. I forget what the current patch is. I'm bad with numbers. <laughs> but the current patch, they've added some anomalies and stuff that once you finish researching them, there are deposits of, let's say, unity that you can just harvest from the stations themselves, right? Uh, but now we're going to get into the buildings. now. There are both Gestalt and non-Gestalt buildings, and there's also variances between regular empires and megacorp empires on just the amount of jobs and what they produce, right? Uh, we can start with the uh, Autochton uh, Monuments. That is the single hardest word that I've had to say, and I've, I, I've tried to say it like 10 times before starting this video. I only got it once. And I already messed up. So we're not going to do that again. Uh, I'll talk about... The monuments! <laughs> uh, they produce up to six culture workers, but the initial building only produces two culture workers. Now, the only difference between a regular empire and a megacorp in this instance is that the name of the building changes. I think it's, it goes up to a hypercoms form. Something like that. It just changes the name. I'm going to have the decal up there because your boy, I'm bad with names. Apparently, I'm bad with math and names at the same time. So I'm not going to try to say it a third time. <laughs> Culture workers produce plus four unity and 10% towards your governing ethics attraction. Uh, if you are a spiritualist, you gain access to the temple building. Now, uh, temple buildings gain from two to six priest jobs depending on the the tier of the building and 
priest jobs produce about four unity and two amenities per per job, right? But if you are a mega corp, that changes. Uh, the temple building will now produce one priest job and one manager job and scaling up to three of each, depending on the tier, obviously. And managers, instead of amenities, they create trade value. Administrative offices, which are one of the main ways to get unity for regular empires, uh, they make bureaucrat jobs, two to six, same as the temples. All, most of the unity buildings, it's usually two to six jobs. Bureaucrats themselves, they produce four unity, simple. Uh, there's obviously civics that add bonus effects, like uh, plus one unity or plus one stability, stuff like that. Uh, if you go into other civics, however, there are, they create special buildings that can also create unity in the first place. Uh, you have the Memorialist Civic, which creates the Death Chronicler job at the Sanctuary of Repose. Pretty self-explanatory. They create hey, like plus four unity and plus 2.5 stability on the planet. It's to go hand in hand with mostly the tomb rules that you could possibly be colonizing, stuff like that. They are called Death Chroniclers for a reason. If you take a Death Cult Civic, you get access to the Sacrificial Temple. And now the Sacrificial Temple is different in the way that it creates a Death Priest job, but also a Mortal Initiate. The guy who's going to go... So... Death Priests, they produce three unity, but they also produce a little bit of uh, society research there and two amenities. So it essentially goes three to one. Three unity, two amenities, one society research. Whereas the Mortal Initiate is a little bit different. The Mortal Initiate produces two amenities, two unity, but also two society research. Which is funny because every time the sacrifice stuff happens, you lose that you lose that worker. But it's for the greater good. What can you say? If you are going down the psionics route, you get access to the psychorps, which are buildings that create telepath jobs. Now these telepaths they create plus six unity per month, but also minus thirty five crime, which is really really nice to have but it also increases your job output by five percent so the resources you get from jobs so your credits your minerals your food all that kind of stuff now before i forget there's going to be a little bit extra here for megacore specifically if you are a spiritualist you are able to build the temples of prosperity which in turn create prosperity preacher jobs now Prosperity preacher jobs, they don't make too much unity. They give you like one plus one unity, but they also give some amenities and extra trade value as well. But before we finish with the regular empire buildings here, there are some buildings that do increase uh, unity production, both for spiritualists and non-spiritualists. For non-spiritualists, you have the auto curating vault which gives you plus 10 to unity and 15% bonus to your administrator output, which would pretty much be your bureaucrats and stuff like that. For the spiritualist, you have the Citadel of Faith, which creates a high priest job. The building itself, however, gives you plus 10 to unity and also increases the output of your priests by 15%. Now, the auto curating vault does not have a job associated with it, but the Citadel of Faith does. This high priest job, which is a ruler shrapnel job, it by itself creates plus six to unity as well as five amenities just for the job itself. Before we go over to Gestalt here, your planetary capitals do have jobs that create unity if you have certain civics or certain uh, ethics and stuff like that. I'm going to list them right there. I ain't going to talk about them though. Pretty basic stuff. Uh, now, if you are a Gestalt, you can... Nothing really changes all that much in terms of the the jobs themselves. They, they basically do the same thing. Although the difference between organic and synthetic is really just the name of the jobs. They basically do the same thing. Uh, if you are a hive mind, you get access to synaptic, uh, synaptic nodes. I cannot for the life of me speak today. This is, there's going to be so many cuts in this video. Jesus Christ. Uh, 
Obviously, synaptic nodes create synapse drone jobs. Synapse drones create four unity per month and two amenities. Pretty simple. Whereas the synthetic just all will create uplink nodes. Uplink nodes, you, you basically get the same variance of a synapse drone. It's just called coordinators in this instance. And it creates plus four unity, but it creates minus two deviancy. Granted, I'm getting some of this info from the wiki, so if it's outdated, not my fault. Uh, also consider that if you are a rogue servitor of a machine intelligence, you are going to be getting unity from your biotrophies. These biotrophies, depending on their happiness, can create a little bit less uh, housing usage for you, but it's mostly going to create plus three unity per month and 1% to your complex drone output per biotrophy pop. There are some ascension perks that do create unity that we'll go over now, just so we, we can take a look at it, right? All right, for the E, the e. all right, for the ascension perks, uh, we're gonna bring out to <clears throat> press the notepad that I've written all of my notes on because my brain dumb, big dumb. Uh, we're going to look at the Ascension perks and their modifiers to your Unity. One of them is Executive Vigor, which is a Ascension perk that adds plus 100 to your Edict Fund. Now, if you are already making a lot and a lot of Unity, you might not necessarily need this, but it is nice to have sometimes. Consecrated Worlds, however... <clears throat> Consecrated Worlds is something that spiritualists gain access to, and it adds modifiers to empire-wide unity, uh, ethics traction, and amenity usage. So it grants 2 to 8% to all unity in the empire for unity production. It adds 1 to 4% more amenities, empire-wide again, and plus 2 to 8% per world. Like, all, all these modifiers are dependent on the level of consecration of those planets. There's a chance to have Venerable, which is the highest tier, which is the 8%, 4%, the other 8%, or a terrible one. I forget what the exact name is, but that's like 2%, 1%, 2%, right? But you can get up to 8% Empire Unity, you can get up to 4% more amenities, and up to 8% more towards your Spiritualist Ethics Attraction. Uh, this is a very good uh, ascension perk if you don't need the planets that are around you, if they're not really good planets like size 10, size 9, stuff like that. You can just consecrate them and get that bonus unity production for basically nothing. Obviously, it does cost a little bit to consecrate the world in that decision, but other than that, like you'll more than likely recoup that initial lump sum. Uh, one vision is an ascension perk that I take quite often just because it adds the 50% uh, governing ethics attraction, which is very, very nice. It also gives you plus 10% monthly unity. It also lowers the amenity usage on all of your planets by 10% as well, which is, it, it's a nice thing. I never pick it for that though. I pick it for the governing ethics attraction for the most part so that my empire doesn't try to keep going xenophile for some reason. And then obviously, if you want to go into the Psy Corps, right, and to get those telepath jobs, you're going to have to be going for Psionics, which is Mind Over Matter into Transcendence. Obviously, that allows you to touch the Shroud, and the Shroud is a whole other can of worms that we ain't going to get into today. Uh, but other than that, that should pretty much cover it, if I, if I remember correctly. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to leave a like down below. And again, I do appreciate the support in the previous video. It's very weird to have people actually, you know, click on my stuff. I'm terrible at this, but I do appreciate you. I hope you all have a lovely day. If you haven't already, consider subscribing or join the Discord that's linked in the description below to get more content. All right, you all have a lovely day, and I'll catch you again after the next one. Goodbye!